So, hey, yeah, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So do you pronounce your name Shaw Cruz? Yes, Shaw Cruz. Shaw Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, welcome. And uh, you were, uh, we were just chatting. Uh, you were uh, saying you, you did uh, visit Florida? Yes, I used to live in New York. In 2008, uh, we moved with my family. We won the green card lottery. Yes. Is that a one in a hundred thousand? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my wife won three times. She won it for her sister, for her mother, and for her um, uh, cousin, and then for uh, ourselves. So four times actually. Wow. She's a lucky one. And we moved in 2008. It was early iOS. It was just the iPhone. Uh, the iPhone was released, and I had a company in Tashkent back here in Uzbekistan when I was born. Um, and the company was doing, we were developing web solutions, web applications. Uh, we, had a, we had a great client in San Diego, uh, starting from 2005, I was mm. doing offshore development for him. And uh, one, you know, the main project was a, a social network. We started in 2005, along with Facebook. And we tried to do something along with Facebook, yeah, let's see. but you know it was fun, and we were developing Ruby on Rails solutions those days, and uh, and then Flex, and then I moved to New York and I started doing iOS development and publishing iPhone apps. In yeah, uh, around around when was was that? Is that around 2012 or so? No, eight. Okay, all of that happened really really around that that area that time that was the so, very beginning the very beginning once the app store was launched and steve jobs announced it i applied for a developer license and i got it in october 2008 it was like two months three months after the launch and i and i just you know in two weeks i put out my first app because i lived in queens i had not i had some clients I was doing web development, but I was struggling with money desperately because, you know, clients tend to underprice, uh, underpay and stuff like that. And it was pretty, it was a pretty tough business. And I wanted to do products. I wanted to have my own products. And I started doing these iPhone apps. My first one was uh, an English dictionary. It's like just a dictionary. I, I you know, I compiled something from the web, uh, like idioms, idiomatic phrases, and mm -hmm. put it for 99 cents and it started selling. It started, oh my goodness. It started making $50 a day and that was my rent. That was oh my, my goodness. <laughs> Man, I want to do this as much as possible. Wow. And, and, uh, and I rolled up my sleeves. I was doing it all myself because there was no I was developers to hire in Tashkent or to do that. So I have to do it all myself. It's so interesting. Myself. We usually hear OG stories related to blockchain, but your, your OG story uh, really uh, feels much deeper uh, because of the, uh, the iOS. Uh, uh, I started OG. two iOS. weeks after the app store release. That's uh, that's, that's two most, months. That's months. Two, yeah, no. Okay. 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 But, that, that's that's how I, I I used to live in the states without worrying to getting hired. I was putting up uh, apps. I had around like seventy apps, seven zero, and I and I worked with Samsung. I worked with Disney. I made some games, and we grew up to fifteen people in Tashkent. And I moved to Los Angeles because I wanted oh. to live in California. Because well, there there was a there was a guy from uh, Apple. Uh, his name was Big Motherfucker. His, his, his Twitter. <laughs> and he, he taught me how to smoke weed, you know, in, in the States, in Denver, Colorado. So Okay, the, okay. The first time. And that made me move to Los Angeles, to California, to explore psychedelics and all that stuff. Deep okay. <laughs> yes, yes, like Terrence McKenna. Terrence, Mc I love Terrence McKenna. I've, I've listened to all of his uh, lectures. That was that was one of the you know most important things in my life and, and things that I got from living in the states. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to I had to leave LA. I had to uh, fly back to Tashkent 
and in 2014, in 2014, 2014, I- yeah, Is that yeah. Uzbekistan? Yeah, back in Uzbekistan, no money, nothing. Everything left to my ex-wife. Okay. Yes, she's a lawyer. She got uh, the bar in California. She's originally from Uzbekistan. She she went up through getting two bars, one in New York, one in California. And once she okay. got a job, once she had everything, she kicked me out. Of and course. I, yeah, I, I flew back, left my kids, two kids in LA money and everything and started from started things from scratch but i started uh, doing vr because in 2014 when, when when was uh when was that around uh, i'm guessing i don't know uh, two, around 2012 ish or something well in 12 yes i moved to la in 2012 mm -hmm. yes, in yeah of, okay so you're about five to, to seven years out of that major transition with mm -hmm. with uh Which, what transition the one where you were basically moving two different directions from from your your family. Mm. Um, maybe I don't. Know. Around do two thousand. So since that split, uh, yeah. it's been about five to seven years. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Since fourteen, it's been a while, and kids are uh, grown up, and now. Uh, moving into the next my next phase my next phase is going to be in uh, in europe i'm moving to europe i got a job offer i want to be there because you know we have to move we have to do things in 2014 uh, i started doing vr so VR yeah is not, it's not it's not just uh they play with it well i do play with it I exercise with it because this is the best fitness device you can get. You don't need uh, to go to fitness. You can do things at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do body combat exercising and 15 minutes, you're sweating like a pig and you get, you know, all your muscles are working and you have fun and it's just, you know, um, just put it on. And like next thing you mentioned, you, you have done 15 minutes of exercise because it's fun and you have all the, uh, uh, you can monitor everything. You you can measure things. You can you can see. Well, now you can see why I I quick turned on the Oculus because mm -hmm. um, uh, that's a very high value uh, personally, subjectively. Uh, it's it's not uh, 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 like uh, it, it's it is a substantive move toward uh, that direction. Uh, only prompted by you, you know, and that was just yesterday. So what, the fourth tenant to why we built this team or, or what our purpose is, is to, uh, to, to realize our value. Uh, so it's uh, fascinating to see uh, something like, for example, that maybe I could rely on, that is you and I connecting using VR. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to, that's going to populate an enormous amount for me personally. So right there, it's a subjective, uh, it's a subjective uh, call or or interpretation uh, that uh, I'll say high value relative. I'm good. Now this morning, you chime in the chat and say, "Hey Ryan, I can help you with with understanding the token creation process." Well, this is a second and relatively immediate value uh, spike uh, where in our fourth tenant of our team purpose is to realize our value. So in other words, those four tenants, um, two of them at least are very fractally focused. And uh, that's the mystery is what is what is fractally going to do? So so I'm curious because the, the fourth one is very interesting. Uh, but the team management and uh, productivity and all these items are implied by this this purpose. And the mission is is clear just to say, hey, let's let's do something that we kind of know, at least we know what the scope is, it, despite the large scope. OK, we have a very large place to grow uh, the translation across EOS and EOS IO. And that may change to even beyond EOS IO, but forget it for now. It's limited. EOS and EOS IO. Uh, okay, so um, so when with those two instances of yours, um, with uh, 
uh, coupled with with this value metric or this tracking, this tracking. I'm interested in the uh, how the community values us, how I value us, uh, how we maybe explicitly and implicitly experience uh, product uh, 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 forward progress <laughs> and, and look at it and and and, and experience it. Uh, of course, lots of dialogue. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, so uh, your VR is not the last two years and ha ha. It's no, it's a six or seven year uh, uh, experience, and, and it, that that typifies why I started saying what I was just what I just now said. So uh, yeah, please take it take it back and continue. Uh, I wanted to point that out, just if nothing more to say. Uh, this is very high value, you know, and I'm very happy to hear uh, and, and welcome and thank you for joining the uh, the team. My pleasure. Well, you're uh, you, you you stepped up. You um, leaded us to to group to get together, and uh, and I put aside my ego uh, that was trying to chime in and say, hey, you know what? You're gonna look. You 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 gotta look for high value people so you can get more respect. But you know that that's bullshit. Let's go. Let's dive. Let's do. Let's try and experiment. And I'm, 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 I'm glad you you are there and you did this. Thank you. And, and uh, to you know, just just to give you the context on how you can use me, uh, I'll continue. You know, just <laughs> revealing Please. my journey. My journey. So my VR journey was in 2014 when Disney almost bankrupted me because I I made a game with Disney Interactive, Disney Digital. It was an amazing game, but it didn't make anything financially. So I and I put a year of my work and all my team, my team's work into it and I was almost bankrupt. So I was like, I'm look I was looking like what is the next thing? What do I want to do? And then I saw this DK1, this first VR headset and I was like man, this is working. Well I got to try this. So I drove down to Irvine Orange County, and I, I got this Oculus, and I put it on, and I was like, "Man, this works! I have now. Now I'm not just doing this uh, little uh, device, little window into the virtual reality. I have these stereoscopic infinite display." And Is I this can... before Facebook picked them up? Um, probably. Probably, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Sure, I, yeah. I know Facebook sat on the technology for like five years, and I swear that was a government intervention. I believe the technology was so powerful. They took Oculus Rift and just took it for themselves. I was like, well, that's a government grab or something. Yeah, I, th I think they did, it, they did it just just before. Well, I discovered it because Facebook bought it. That was the signal for me. Like, oh, my oh, God, this, there is something going on because Facebook you know, bought it for $2 billion and... That is something I'm missing right now because I used to be, I've been, I've been a pioneer in technology and uh, I started programming in 1988. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, well, you know, uh, it's lovely. Just, I'll, I could hear stuff like that all day. I, I literally could sit here and listen to that, that kind of thing all day. Meaning, this morning when I saw you speak to us slash Ryan and me about, oh, sure, I can help you. That's a thousand X. I, I don't know if it's that, that, that much leverage for what we want. But Ryan was going to run down a whole bunch of stuff. I say, well, let's go to the EOS developers channel. Let's so and so. And next thing you know, you're here local on the, on the foundation which is not translate me and i, I want to explain the players uh, to you uh crudely at some point and and probably quickly because uh I, i'll be uh I'm, I'm a little bit time compressed as i want to be gone here probably in about 10 to 15 minutes okay. unfortunately it would be an <laughs> introduction but we'll uh, we'll uh, it's a good introduction. And uh, if if you want to uh, uh, complete the sequence between say fifteen and uh, two thousand twenty two, now uh, I will listen as I uh, finish my uh, second brew of coffee here. <laughs> good, 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 good. So I started in eighty eight. I was twelve, and I was um, uh, solving mostly exercises because it wasn't practical. I was just coding algorithms, and I was good at it. And I was. Um, 
uh, best in the country in Uzbekistan. I, 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 the, you, we used to have these contests among school students and I was best during five, five years and I was the top 10 among uh, Soviet Union uh, students uh, solving these computer algorithm exercises uh, in uh, 1988 until um, 1994. 94. And then in 94, I went to uh, to get a bachelor degree in economics because I understood that I'm coding already enough like a, like an adult and I need to understand how business works and how money is made and how to make money, how to build a business and how to do all that stuff. So I, I, I started doing that. In, um, then I started trading. I start. I learned about trading and, and, and technical analysis in, 90, in 1995. Five, and I moved to Russia, to St. Petersburg, to become a broker on uh, der derivatives exchange and future, futures and options exchange. I wanted to trade and, and it didn't happen, but I learned how things are, do are done there. I got a license, but the market uh, fell down in 1998. There was a crisis, a huge one. So I went back to IT and development and stuff like that. And uh, in 2000, we started, me and my friends, um, uh, uh, we started a, a first social network website, Humans Are You. And uh, that was a social network before Facebook. And it was- And, uh, and just around the time MySpace was uh, peaking or just on its way out, I guess. Yeah, I built it, but I had no idea how to make a business out of it. And I got- <clears throat> Uh, my girlfriend pregnant, so I, I dropped out of that startup and uh, we didn't build it. No, you know, we launched it, it was working, it's still working, it's still working. It's 22 years old, but it's still working. But we didn't make money, and then I went to ERP systems because I wanted to, you know, I needed money, and I, do, I started doing ERP implementation, um, CRM, ERP, stuff like that. ERP, what is ERP? Uh, enterprise resource planning. So these, these large, uh, you know, large enterprise applications that allow you to manage money and people and, and you know, inventory and stuff like that. So uh, then I went back to Tashkent, uh, started doing web development, um, uh, web two development, Ruby on Rails, then the US mobile applications, iOS and Android. Um, then went back to Tashkent, started doing VR, started teaching at the university and um, 2017, you know, well, and in, in, VR, in VR, I, I was uh, freelancing. I was doing projects by myself. I had an office. I, I built an office. I, I grouped uh, around 10 developers, but financially it didn't make it because uh, the market was too narrow, too small, too niche. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like that it's not going to work. I'm just better be freelancing and just exploring the technology. And I built around 20 projects in VR. Um, mostly, well, I had like 11 games published, small ones. What, very what's, what's the uh, EOS IO based VR? I know we've got Uplift World is like a Minecraft and then we've got Upland. But the one you showed me last night with the Facebook has more actual realistic uh, creatures uh, for, uh, for avatars. And mm -hmm. then uh, my thought is when we're in a VR space, I, I usually like to have my laptop, maybe take notes. And is that, a, a, I, we'll work that out when we start connecting, but still, I want to know EOS and EOS IO, is there anything interesting to you on the, uh, okay, 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 gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah. so, okay, not yet. That's a good, good correction. I agree. Uh, I don't know what, what's brewing as far as engaging in this, uh, 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 this dimension um, uh, so on EOS and EOS IO, but I want to inspire that. And I think the start is what we're doing. So I'm very, I'm, I'm okay with where I'm at. Uh, and uh, I would have hoped that you would have said there's an interesting or two or three interesting projects on the move in our in our communities. Uh, but uh, may, maybe, maybe, maybe there are, maybe there aren't uh, in some aspects and maybe not in others. So uh, yeah, uh, so please uh, finish off, would you? Yes, 2017, I discovered, not discovered, I was actually blogging about Bitcoin and uh, crypto before starting 2015, but I didn't buy it, I didn't trade on it, I was doing, you know, I was just, I was a software developer, I wanted to make products, so mm -hmm. I was doing VR products, and 2017, I realized I'm missing, I'm missing something, there is something huge, because I realized that it's not just 
money that somebody built and I can trade with it, but it's actually a technology where I can make my own money. I can print money. Not okay, print so it's me. still money-based, not as much smart contract-based as money-based in your head. Money-based, yeah, but yeah. I can make my own money and I can use it to uh, bring micropayments in VR. That's what I looking was looking into. And, and, and I started trading. I started trading. I was like, oh my God, a trader woke up in me. And I was like, trading. I started building trading bots. I uh, became an anal analyst at a, a crypto uh, fund. Uh, that was a job. And then I, you know, I was, I, and, and, and then I discovered EOS. I didn't believe then Larimer first. It was like, my own, this, this guy is tail, tailing telling fairy tales that's too about much. scalability yeah well, yeah thank you and and it was like man i and i started following in 2018 i was following the launch and i was learning the technology i was launching my node i was looking into becoming a node producer block producer uh, i started building uh smart contracts in c plus plus because i wanted to you know you know i to experience it firsthand and build things myself and uh, my first app was a Telegram bot that was like, um, you know, showing uh, what's happening with your account, just, you know, monitoring your account and like something like a block explorer on Telegram, just like looking at what's happening on the blockchain. And then I uh, found some sources, uh, some contracts uh, on a, the dice game. That was, that was the dice period, casinos. And I, yes, was, yes. I, built, I built a little casino um, with smart contracts and dividends and a token and the leaderboard and stuff like that. But um, I didn't make a business out of it. I sold it, made a little bit of money just to survive. But uh, I learned how, you know, the smart contracts work and how to, how to build a dividend system. That's what... That was my next aha moment that I can build a business that is 100% automated, that is on the blockchain. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can um, turn it off or, um, you know, and, uh, and it generates dividends and these dividends are distributed every hour. So getting yeah. every hour dividends from a casino, who cares if it's a casino, you know, Donald Trump has a casino. So, um, and, um, and it was like, man, this is fun. But then it just, again, fell, fell off the cliff. You know, all the mm -hmm. most casinos just, you know, went to, you know, just disappeared and no dividends and stuff. And, and I moved, uh, and I moved actually to government because I, I wanted to move to Amsterdam. <laughs> I wanted to move to Amsterdam because it was bored in Tashkent. And yeah. I wanted to smoke quality weed. So, but, uh, okay. you know, I was approached by the government, the local government of Uzbekistan and the counselor of the president approached me and said, like, we need to, um, we want to build an offshore zone. We want to support blockchain and all that bullshit. But they asked me to help them build, uh, you know, uh, develop the uh, regulation on crypto exchanges. Like, okay. we, we need a law. We need to make yeah. it legal for crypto exchanges. They already had a, a nice um, a law, like a decree by the president that was making um, it legal to hold crypto assets. Um, they didn't call them um, currencies. There is no notion this currency in, 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 the, in the regulation. It's just an asset and you, you can own it. You can, and, and if you own it and if you have any profit in these uh, new virtual uh, blockchain assets, you, you're, uh, your exemption from the taxation. So in Uzbekistan, that's amazing. Uzbekistan was at the very forefront zero. of all. Wow. Yeah, zero. And then I, I developed them. I, I, I wrote down, sat down and wrote and found some experts and analyzed everything that's going on in the world. And I made the most liberal regulation for crypto. <laughs> in Bravo, world. bravo. Yeah. Didn't work. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I understand. But, I submitted it to the uh, president's office, and they just cut it out. And, and they 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 made a crypt. They made a uh, it's a lot stricter than I wanted it to be. And I read and I looked into how uh, how laws are made, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm never gonna do, and I'm I'm not I'm never gonna trust the governments again because I know that this is just how they make it. This is insane. Yeah, it's it seems to be more about how to transition than how it is or how people are inclined to keep it or to make it it's about how do you get across these bridges like over and over and over of trend of transition 
So uh, let me ask, uh, where are you at uh, right now? What are you doing? Well, right now, two weeks ago, I got a job offer from a friend of mine in New York. He's, um, he's doing out staffing. He's, he's selling programmers to uh, US-based companies. And he, he told me, he, uh, he, he's selling me right now. He's my agent. Oh, got it. That's great. So you're doing, he helped you with freelance uh, job, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's great. And then, uh, and then your uh, EOSIO prowess, uh, your uh, competency in, in EOSIO uh, is, uh, to me, I thought, very high value. Uh, so uh, uh, my, my thoughts there are, um, what are, are, do you have plans of your own outside of his agency uh, to, uh, to, to grab uh, w one of these uh, funded uh, objectives, uh, take, to take some kind of stake in one of these funded objectives? I do have a grant. Uh, I got uh, some, some, some contributions and uh, on EOSIO, this is the, so uh, I'm gonna keep, well, aside my consulting and development with my agent for the corporations, which are not gonna be blockchain at all. This is gonna be just regular full stack development and probably DevOps. Now I'm looking into becoming a DevOps uh, like expert, like specialist consultant, because I, well, with my, you know, um, uh, with my experience, it's better to keep things stable and help companies to run things, uh, scale things, and, and have quality production rather than uh, quickly building some prototypes, which I've been doing mm -hmm. for years. So I can do prototypes, but now I'm going to make more production stuff, uh, production scalable stuff. And cool. uh, I still keep my project, which is uh, a trading bot uh, for EOS IO blockchains. Um, because I still want to trade, but I don't want to do it manually, um, uh, which which is profitable, but it's not, you know, I, I still have to build things, not just make money. But uh, trading with bots is, is very interesting. So my project right now on EOSIO is Hummingbot. This is an open source, a very uh, solid and uh, with great potential uh, open source bot that I'm going to integrate with, uh, um, you know, DeFi box and Elcor exchanges, DEXs, the DEXs that we have and the blockchain itself so that we can do uh, market making and we can do arbitrage between uh, these uh, low cap, uh, you know, tokens that are just being exchanged with, a a a you know, AMM, uh, with arbitrage them with order books. And that's what we're missing right now. So there is no like... Um, uh, there's no solution there on the market. So that's that's what I'm still going to be building on EOSIO. Okay. That does sound like that one token gravy. They were all about the arbitrage. Did you ever expose yourself to that project? Gravy, no. Uh, yeah, GRV, but uh, GRV was an arbitrage uh, engine. Uh, you mm -hmm. put the EOS in, it uses the EOS to zero, and it generates GRV using mm -hmm. their, uh, their uh, arbitrage bot. So uh, I don't know uh, uh, what the state of that is, but it was lovely. They had a meme where they were all uh, dancing in line and that was the gravy train and it would come over. Everybody's wearing strange hats and they just, it was a really fun project. It was, it would always make you giggle because people were like, Hey, this is the gravy train. And, and, and uh, of course it goes, goes to zero. <laughs> maybe, maybe it'll come back if the, the develop their Italian developers, but uh, they got their own telegram, but uh well, uh, that sounds uh, that sounds great. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things I want to I want to shift around here. So it's 734. Uh, I want to be uh, be mobilizing because uh, I have a, a, a items that I need and I'm committed really to attend to. Uh, but uh, for the first and foremost is uh, I want to comment and say that that was such a great intro, and, and I, I feel that uh, I. Uh, I, I, like I, I was able to get kind of what I wanted of like, hey, you know, let's let's do an intro. Um, I, I've 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 tacitly presented uh, who I am, uh, but not completely. Uh, so uh, simply put, next time, next time you're gonna speak. That's a good idea. Yeah, and 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 you you probably know enough just based on what we're doing in the chats and how we we pitch to what we're trying to do. So in terms of my identity, right now all you've been exposed to is probably the, the ETF or the EOS Translation Foundation mm -hmm. uh, identity. Uh, so when it comes to my background, uh, 
in a bullet point version, 2013 uh, uh, first uh, 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 Mount Gox, yeah. So Mount Gox, and uh, now that uh, that lawsuit is almost up. So it'd be great. So I'm a happy guy. And then also uh, 2017 smart contract head turner for me, big time. And then 2018 smart contract Ethereum fail. Uh, that's me. And then it's Larimer and whoa. And then it's shift everything around a very successful uh, plenty and uh, Genesis across the Genesis uh, threshold. And then uh, the story that you and I are acquainted well enough with now has been enough for to tell my story <laughs> in, in this field. It's every EOS holders story. Uh, and I look forward to the the, the 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 larger publications that will capture that story if as we grow successful because it's a great story but uh, anyways uh so so the latest is all the enf and the hack last year and uh the uh the the, the larimer uh, uh lead and then the fractally break off and then come back to it a rejection of 3.4 million uh uh funding it, it's like all that stuff folds into the what exactly are we doing now with this evm check the box i'm good with that but I understand the token will not be a one-to-one -one EOS EVM thing. It's more like they're they're taking a small chunk out to fund the EVM. So the token holders will not have a one-to-one -one stake in the EVM array. So anyways, I want to know more about all that. And uh, that's where I'm at almost up to the minute. But there's plenty of filler in gaps. But I'll have that Oculus in a couple of days. I'll definitely reach out. And also, we've developed that spreadsheet. That's, that's basically scopes out our mission, our purpose as a team, and also short term, medium term and long term, and then just a notes, a notes section. So uh, pretty soon, if not now, well, not now, but pretty soon, we, we'll probably have a lot of low hanging fruit that we'll point at and be running things down. Right now, we're more like putting it all out there, brains, uh, just, just putting things on paper. We have plenty of items that are brainstormable, but just putting little things on paper. So uh, if you do look at that spreadsheet, uh, request access, I'll grant you the access, and then I'll grant you commenting rights. And so you can put comments and I'll fold that in for now uh, to, to the larger list of where do we wanna mobilize? Uh, because uh, right now we are peak mobilization uh, because it, there's so much energy that is, uh, available and at at work in formulation where you said early on in this conversation that you liked that how the team came together so did i no mass no inertia and i think that's what the decentralization is, and the fractally is trying to capture that inertia free uh cooperative cooperation uh where everyone's kind of roaming and the value is just is just pouring into all of the different systems. And we're just, to solve for governance is to solve for human coordination. So coordination is kind of the, the basket that brings all of that value into the, into, the, into the working level. And we can restore the, the, uh, the creatures across this planet uh, that cannot speak for themselves, but that contribute uh, the, 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 the work and the value to the to the material world here on earth mm. see so so the, the the decentralization is meant to take it to take the value from going outside into the abstract uh realms and bring it into the concrete working level material so we put the money back into the pockets of the trees Who's going to speak for the next generation of autism? Mm. Who's going to repopulate the creatures and the diversity that we love? We don't just love it. We don't even speak about it mm -hmm. because it's terrifying. Well, our, our, our generations are turning to, and they are now speaking. And I hear the Elon Musk say, I hear, uh, our our common communities, you and me. This is this is this is a language we already talk in freely. So I think what we're doing is just bringing a coordinated effort led by Dan and his coordination mechanics 
to uh, to to to, to uh, scrape and, and to maintain this regenerative tokenomic analog to digital as your value enters the spaces material or cyber material. The value streams uh, re re uh, repopulate your 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 uh, capacity to store your value. And right now it's just gonna be a tokenomic storage. Uh, eventually maybe it'll be a lot a lot more free from any kind of temporary holdings in, in the fluid flow of the uh, exchange of value. And as we grow closer and closer together, because I think that's really what's what the singulatarians and the uh, all of the major schools are speaking to is the convergence slash the, the breakdown of the, uh, of the structures that would otherwise uh, ensure a, uh, a, uh, a very stable, but a strange polarity. So I think that that polarity can, can break down and, and a lot of things can really uh, help uh, ex sort of accelerate uh, a, a, uh, a handful of must do Mm -hmm. items i mean just existential must do's you know we always talk about the major problems okay but but stepping up turning to and engaging with these uh forbidden uh uh absolutely do not enter uh uh classically rejected uh uh, uh so, uh, subjects is now uh impossible to ignore and, and so so we're slowly uh sifting up uh the the, the uh the uh problems and the solutions in, in inheriting them into our own plate. So as we, you and me come together, I say, okay, we're going to try to speak to the, the great translation barrier. <laughs> you know, it is on that plate. Nobody wants to, to get in there and make the sausage. They don't want to look at it. Mm -hmm. They just say, just give me the sausage, please. I don't want to look at it. But, but really, I think the, the blockchain uh, 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 fields of, uh, of, of laborers are turning to the the hard questions and they're and they're really saying let's let's do it we're going there uh, well to me things are simple uh i know how the bureaucrats work i've seen it i feel, I feel it and i'm very close to it because i live in the capital and i have a lot of friends bureaucrats and my you know university mates who are bureaucrats and i know how it works and i just hate it and i want to replace it wow I, that's it yeah well they will have very little i think they will have very i think they'll have very little uh leverage uh down here shortly and i think the uh the detroit uh, auto industry is a good model mm. for what it looks like when that kind of group uh dynamic uh uh loses their their leverage mm. uh you'll, you'll see it first before the the, the larger groups uh, you'll see it in the Detroit uh, here over the next four years or something. We'll be able to see what that looks like. Well, we have to really help them uh, because because this is going to be a uh, very vulnerable and depressive state. So uh, same with the uh, the large control bureaucratic control systems. We, we yeah. co come in there and we hold them basically like a baby. We take care of them. They're the new autistic uh, or they're the new trees and the ones that can't speak for themselves. So that's how that's going to end up going you, you got to turn to and take them across that when when they collapse <laughs> you know so yeah. so yeah Good. that's the that's the study Th thank you uh, so this has been great uh yeah i i am uh, bound uh, for a uh, commitment here or there and uh but uh uh the chats uh i'm going to speak with ryan about this uh leverage for uh exploring what the co real cost because he doesn't mind hiring this out but he needs to kind of know the real cost of creating a token to support his larger plan of getting people to train the algorithm the neural network out translate me mm -hmm. as a has neural network algorithm for all their languages all the way down long they only have 20 languages right now but they're building this and they get all the UIs necessary and they work mainly with hotels and the, the people on the other end translate and help the algorithm. And they have a token on the NEO, NEO blockchain. They, they were funded 30,000 and decided to go there, but they realized there's value in all these different chains. So they're going to move into this EOS. They want to build a token. They want our community to train their algorithms. And right now they offer free APIs for all translation services. So we've hooked up with Jesse and the bees 
to give him a 75% translation solution and a user interface to manage all of his documents. It's, it's really sexy. We'll talk about that later. Uh, okay. So Jesse, Jesse said, oh, wow, that's beautiful. I said, We're, let's do it. So uh, he can get the trainers, the tra whitelisted trainers. They do this. The thing flags on Jesse's. He sees it's been, tra uh, been translated, finished off, translated. It's already been through the algorithm before mm -hmm. it went to the trainer. The trainer gets a uh, stake in the token. And uh, so we want to move that whole op over here to EOS. We don't know how exactly, and we don't know how to actually implement it technically either. So uh, the cost, the cost, uh, okay. Natalie. Okay, so thank you for listening to that. That was really uh, one of the points that we wanted to, to touch. So, uh, well, I look forward to round two. Uh, is there yes. any fi final, final uh, thought or response or? Well, just making the token is the tip of the iceberg. So I can issue the token, just create it like within like an hour. It's easy. I have the contract ready. I can just, just deploy or give it you give you the contract and give you instructions how to deploy it. Just buy the RAM, deploy it. You issue the, the tokens and you you generate them, you send them. It's all easy. But uh, to to make it complete, I need the whole picture. The yes. why and how, why do you need a token, how you're going to use it, and what UI you need, what APIs you need, and all, all and we, that. And I don't think we know that answer yet. I think we've, I've, I've offered up, well, peg the TMN token, peg it from NEO to EOS, but that's not necessarily the best solution. That's just, you could peg it. Now you got uh, this thing growing over here based on the original array and, and size and shape of the array. About you have it on two chains, but I don't think necessarily know if pegging the token is the best fundamental technological solution. So your question is great. We will work I did to peg a token. I, I did peg a token. So the token I issued right now is called AWAX, A WAX. So there is oh. the WAX token, and I and I made my own A WAX token, which is Angel, Angel WAX, because I have a, a, a player's guild called Angel Farmers. There is a game uh, Farmers World. And my guild is a, is, a, is a group of investors who invest into this game and they mine tokens, they farm tokens, they play the game. And I build a boat that does it, that help them you know, farm in the game. And I issued the token that is called AWAX. So you buy AWAX and that generates you passive income in WAX. Brilliant. Right now it's packed to WAX. So you, you send one WAX to the contract and you get one AWAX in exchange. So right now in the pre-sale phase, I just, you know, make it one-to-one -to, -one to make it simple. So I think what we're going to want to do is I want, I want you and Ryan to discuss a little bit. And then I want somehow to connect with folks who are, are familiar with the, the, the growing, like the, the, the future of how to, design programmable finance dynamics uh, contract, how to, there's some fundamentals. You'll probably want to do this. You'll probably want to do this. And you'll probably want to do this if you're going to want to do what you're saying you want to do. You know, so we'll have to reach into the uh, blue papers and the folks who are uh, connect, connecting through the fundamental practices uh, that, are, that are stored all up in the blue papers. Uh, we will definitely want to make sure we've touched the people and or the blue papers themselves and done an 80% solution scraping that for strategy on how to get what we really want. And when I say we, I say the Translation Foundation, but also I say Translate Me, who's, who's one item uh, underneath a larger interest of, of our, our translation interests. So Translate Me is a, a technical solution that's, that's kinetic and moving ours is just getting formed and it says there's a lot of stuff how do we continue to uh to facilitate the the radical growth to to open up all the channel or to increase the bandwidth across different language speaking groups so i think that answers all of our questions for now introductorily introductorily okay good yeah good yes yeah, so uh yes talk to you later talk to you later yeah, great talking. Bye. Okay.